All right. Let's get our hands dirty. Today, we're diving deep into building a Linux kernel, and I mean from scratch. Whoa. Now we're talking serious business. This is the core. This is for those who really want to understand Linux. Yeah, this is the heart and soul of the operating system. We're using a fantastic guide from Phoenix ANAP as our roadmap. It's a step-by-step. -step. They have a great point. You know, as people are running like a, a pre-built kernel in their Linux distribution. Mm -hmm. Right. It just comes with it. But building your own, that's where the real customization begins. Like, let's say you want to mess with some drivers or try some uh, some experimental patches. This is how you do it. It's like instead of just driving a car, we're going to rebuild the engine. Exactly. We're going to fine tune it. You get to see how everything works together, learn a ton. Even if you only do it once, that knowledge is, it's powerful stuff. Yeah. It's invaluable. So let's let's start at the source. We got to grab the source code and kernel.org. Official website. None of that shady download stuff. Go straight to the source. Use the source command. It's the best way. Now, the article even mentions that you might hit a little snag right away, that wget.command-not-found error. Ah, uh, yes, a classic. Just a little reminder that we're at the command line. Things can get a little bumpy. You gotta be ready to troubleshoot. You gotta have the right tools. It's all part of the groundwork. I love that. Okay, so we've downloaded that source code. Now we got to unpack it. Let's see what's inside. And this is where, you know, I kind of geek out because we're talking about millions of lines of code. It's awe-inspiring when you think about it. The blueprint for an entire operating system all in one place. All right, we get to play with it. Step three is where we gather our tools, install those required packages. The article lists a bunch. Git, fake root, build essential. I mean... It sounds intimidating. Like imagine building a house. You wouldn't use a hammer to put in the windows, right? Right. Each package has a job to do. Mm -hmm. Git, tracks changes, fake root, lets us, you know, do things that normally need root privileges. But safely. Exactly. And of course, build essential, the essentials for compiling that code, turning it into something the computer understands. Our team of experts is coming together. Okay, so source code's downloaded, unpacked, we've got our tools. Now it's time to become like software architects, right? We got to look at the blueprint, the kernel configuration. This is where it gets fun. Yeah. This is where you get to tweak it, make it your own. Yeah. The article talks about make menu config. Make menu config. It sounds simple, but trust well, me. I'm sure there's there's got to be more to it. Oh, there's a ton that you can adjust, like mm -hmm. everything. How your system uses memory, network settings, file systems, the whole nine yards. Wow, so we really have that much control. You're basically in the control panel for your whole OS, but, and this is a big but, the article's right to warn about like just changing things randomly. Yeah, like, yeah, don't want to mess with stuff you don't understand. It's like rewiring your house without, you know, knowing what you're doing it could end badly. Yeah. So what are some examples of like what we might actually want to change in this menu? Okay. Let's say you're a big gamer, right? You want your system to run games like butter. Optimized. Exactly. So you might disable some unnecessary features, optimize how resources are allocated, really get that performance boost. So it's not even just adding stuff. It's like stripping it down, making it lean. Exactly. Tailoring it to your needs. And once you've, you know, gone through that configuration maze. Yeah. It's time for the real magic. Building the kernel. It's like we're telling the computer to put it all together. It's beautiful in a way. You'll see all these kernel components scrolling by, memory management, the drivers, the file systems, like a well-oiled machine. But like any big project, sometimes there are hiccups, right? The article specifically mentions this error you might see, especially on Ubuntu. Oh, right. The no rule to make target Debian canonical dash certs dot PM error. Yeah, that one. Sounds scary. A little cryptic. The article's got you covered. It gives you the commands to fix it, something about disabling some conflicting security certificates. It even explains what the commands are doing. I like that. Instead of just like type this, type that, they actually explain. It's about understanding. Exactly. OK, so <laughs> certificates are sorted. We hit make again. And uh, what happens? Do we just wait? Patience, my friend. This is the part where you might want to grab a coffee or something. It takes a while. Building a kernel, it takes time. Depends on your system, too, of course. It's like watching, I don't know, bread dough rise or something. <laughs> Maybe not exactly, but you get the idea. And then once the kernel itself is built, you got to install the modules that go with it. Modules. Like Ooh. the sudo make modules install command, make sure everything's in the right place. Okay, so then the moment of truth, installing the kernel itself, sudo make install. The home stretch. But hold on, one more crucial step before you reboot and, you know, do a victory dance. Okay, what's that? We got to talk about the bootloader. 
G-R-U-B. G-R-U-B. All right. Most people know it, but just in case they don't. It's like the gatekeepers, right? You turn on your computer, G-R-U-B shows up and says, which operating system are we loading today? I love that analogy. So we've got this new kernel. we got to tell G-R-U-B about it. So it uses the right one. Exactly. The article says that usually make install kind of takes care of this for you, but it's a good practice to double check, do it manually. Better safe than sorry, right? What are the commands for that? Pseudo update any tramps and then sudo update grub, basically just refreshing everything so the system knows about our fancy new kernel. Gotcha, update that boot info. So we're really close now, aren't we? It's the moment of truth. Hit that reboot button and let's see if this thing actually works. I swear, I still get butterflies every time. It's like, <laughs> did we break it? Did we make magic happen? Fingers crossed for magic. Okay, so we're back up and the article mentions this command, unname misses. What does that tell us? That, my friend, is how we check if our custom kernel is running the show. If it worked, you'll see the version info, nice and clear. And if it didn't work, uh, asking for a friend. Let's just say there are always more troubleshooting steps. Linux is all about learning, right? But I'm feeling good about this one. Me too, me too. I mean, we really built this from downloading this cryptic source code file to now like we're running our own kernel. It's amazing. And this is where it gets even more interesting. Remember we talked about the modular design of the kernel? This is where that comes into play. Right, like Lego blocks, you can add or remove features. Exactly. So we've got this awesome foundation, but now we can customize it even more. Write our own device drivers, optimize it for specific hardware, the sky is the limit. I'm already thinking, what if I build a kernel that's like hyper-optimized for old school video games? Hey, whatever floats your boat, right? Yeah. Like, that's the beauty of it. You can go as deep as you want, even contribute back to the Linux community with your creations. This deep dive has been quite the journey. And you know what? I feel like I really understand how this stuff works now, not just following instructions blindly. That's the whole point. It's about knowledge, yeah. empowerment, being able to look under the hood and say, hey, I built this. To anyone listening, if this sparked your curiosity even a little, go check out that Phoenix Ec article. It's got all the details, links in the show notes. Right. And remember, Linux is all about exploration. Keep learning, keep tinkering. And who knows, maybe you'll build the next big thing. Couldn't have said it better myself. Until next time, happy hacking, everyone.